I'm sorry. I had to do it. I had to add a little bit of cringe to the video. I'm gonna be honest with you. I gotta have fun with this. Or why else am I doing it? But, you know, we're not trying to get any copyright strikes or any copyright claims. So, you know, done and done. Done and done. Fun's over. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. I am Ryofu, and you are watching The Gaming Harbinger. In today's video, we are here to talk about none other than Super Dimension Century Argus that was released in 1983. This is an anime that no one recommended to me. This is an anime I was not expecting, nor was I looking for. I was looking up some stuff on Space Runaway Ideon. Shocker, I know. But I came across this by accident and I saw Super Dimension and I was like, what, what? This never came to the West? Oh, I got to check this out. 100%, I got to check this out. Being a Macross fan, being a Robotech fan, you know, that was like my start with anime. So I knew I was going to have to look into this. And I am so glad I did. So there are some strange cultural themes that happen within the show. And I believe those are probably the reason why this wasn't included in the Robotech lineup that came to the West. But I'm glad that we're getting a chance and an opportunity to experience it now. These themes in question would have been really difficult to take out because, I mean, they're reoccurring conversations that happen throughout Argus. So that would have been a major challenge. And I think ultimately, in regards to Ro the Robotech trilogy, I think they made the right decision. But we are definitely going to talk about that as well as countless other things in this video in regards to Argus. I'm super excited about this because there's really not a lot of Argus related content on YouTube. So I am proud to be a part of that. You're welcome. If you are new here, I cover gaming news, I cover anime news, as well as I do reviews on both mediums. And lately, my convention videos have been doing quite well, so I will return to those once summer hits. Please consider subscribing if that sounds like your type of vibe. We would love to have you. Orga's story begins with our main protagonist, Kei Katsuragi. He is a very lively and impulsive soldier that loves women. And man, I mean, he really loves women. ま、お前は。ああ。かな、泥棒に込みが。いや、お父さん、それあなたの誤解ですよ。ティナ。ああ。何すんのよ。ところで個人的にも感謝するって言ったよね。ええ。じゃあ、こんな風に感謝して。more on that in a bit. He and his best friend Olsen fly to provide cover to engineers so the orbital elevator can be destroyed. So the world is at war and there are these two factions duking it out. If you don't read or watch a lot of sci-fi, you may not even know what a space or orbital elevator is. Okay, so in, in layman's terms, the way I would explain it is the orbital or space elevator is like a this huge ass thing that burrows deep within Earth's core. And by the way, I'm, we're talking about science fiction, so in case anyone's lost, we're totally talking about made up stuff, okay? So pretend with me. So we have this giant elevator that's burrowed deep within Earth's core, at, kind of like providing support, going all the way into space. And you might be thinking to yourself, like, what is the point of that? What is the purpose? But it's really simple. It's just so rather than constantly have to shoot stuff into space using rockets, rather than do that, you have an elevator. And then now things can be much more easily put into space. I mean, that's the general gist of it. So pretty much these factions are battling it out and one side decides to destroy the space elevator. Now at this point, mankind is experimenting with oscillation bombs. 
All these nukes and gases are old school. This type of weaponry is the future. If you are familiar with the space-time theory, this oscillation bomb is loosely using ideas from that. This is not something you have to understand in order to follow the story, so don't even sweat it. At a certain point, the mission is a bust, but instead of leaving, K takes it upon himself to set up the bomb. This causes a spatial transfer to take place. I suppose if you transfer or teleport someone to a different time or dimension, I guess you're not technically killing them, unless of course you transfer them to a time when or before a meteor hits or something like that. Anyways, Olsen and K are separated and K bumps into a different race of beings known as the Iman. The Iman seem to understand that K plays a factor in all the weird multi-dimensional activity happening and decide to invite him aboard the ship. K feels as if he is still on Earth, but the world is very different. So I want to take a moment to talk about the animation in the show. Obviously, it's dated, just like Edeon was. However, it looks really good, and like, I've seen it streaming, and I've seen it on the Blu-ray that I own, and let me tell you, Blu-ray, the colors just really pop. Obviously, you're getting a 4x3 screen, but even the sound quality of the music sounds better too. It's it's really good stuff. Now full disclosure, there are moments unfortunately, and, and there could be various reasons for this and we have no idea what they were because this was in 1983, but there are moments in the show where there is a loss of quality with the animation. And more specifically, I noticed this uh, towards the last three episodes of the show. I have no idea what's happening. It looks really wonky. It almost looks like, uh, I don't know if the, the animators went on strike for a brief moment and somebody else was doing it for a little while. Like it, It's a noticeable difference where even the characters just look different. It's strange. It's bizarre. Um, like I said, last three episodes, if you really just, if you're curious about it. So when we're talking about the opening and closing song, like the opening song, it's decent fanfare. It's a standard track. But that ending? Ooh, that ending song, man. I'm, I'm feeling that. It's a vibe. It's a vibe. But <laughs> this totally happened by accident. But if you speed up the song to 1.5 speed, I mean, the song, it's like, it's still fire, man. It's still fire. And I don't know. I, 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 I still dig it. I still dig it. In this section, let's take a moment to talk about the characters in the show. So when we get to our main protagonist, his name is Kei Katsuragi. And as I said earlier, he is a total womanizer slash player. Um, I will say this. It's really indicative of the time. So, I mean, growing up in that time period, like seeing characters like this, or even in the late 70s, this was not like shocking. But I mean, you would definitely say it's more questionable, some of the stuff he does, uh, if we're looking at it from a 2023 lens. But for back then, it's not that shocking, like him being in these situations where, you know, he forces a kiss on a girl, stuff like that. And I feel like, you know, when you're in that time period and you're watching stuff like this, it's not uncomfortable per se. You just kind of feel like they're trying to push this mentality or this belief in your head that, okay, this guy has some tricks and trades and he knows how to put moves on girls and stuff. And then they're blindsided or caught off by surprise. But like I said, a 2023 lens, yeah, people would not be down with this. I will say this, having this type of character or experiencing this type of character, it's 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 definitely a different, almost refreshing experience because uh, it's the polar opposite of the type of characters we see in modern day anime. So I'm pretty sure like if you were to grab a young anime fan and they saw a character like this, they would be like, whoa, like we don't see this very often. I'm not saying that they haven't had some unruly anime characters where they haven't had any players or anything, but it's just, it's definitely not the norm. So in some ways it kind of changes up the vibe and it gives a different experience. 
if you're an anime fan. And like I said, if you grew up during this time period, I mean, you've seen this archetype before and it's not really that shocking. This guy is just like really impulsive and very reckless. He's nothing like Hikaru Ichio or AKA Rick Hunter. He's nothing like him. So you're getting a different experience watching this guy fumble around and make bad decisions. <laughs> Olsen K's best friend and partner in crime is the slightly older cool guy in the room. Not the old pervy man in the room. There is a difference. Olsen is supposed to be the same age as K, but due to the spatial transfer that disrupted the multiple dimensions of Earth, Olsen landed on this version of Earth years before K. And I mean years before. It does put a unique spin on their friendship now that he's slightly older, but Olsen has always been a no-nonsense and very calculating individual. Okay, look, there's an active situation going on with this anime. And when it comes to Olsen, he has the fortitude of a legend. He is a freaking legend. Where most men and women would cave into their desires, not Olsen, no. He's not that type of dude. He holds it down to the end, to the end. And just a respectable dude. And I guess that is probably why they incorporated this character with K because you have this dude that just like doesn't budge, doesn't flinch, never folds. I will say, I think he should totally ditch the shades. I think he would be killing it with the ladies even more if he didn't rock those shades. Cause I don't know. I'm not digging his shades. I don't know. I'm being weird. But anyways, let's move on. Mimsy is the main love interest. She seems to be very bright for her age. Her and Kay seem to have chemistry out the gate, but Kay can't stop himself from flirting with every other woman he comes in contact with. And well, there's also the part of her being engaged to Slay. I mean, there is that. So yeah, that also causes problems. Slay is a male imam aboard the Glomer. He's second in command, I believe. And in hindsight, I think Slay is an alright guy. I think he's just a regular dude and isn't as exciting as Kay. I mean, that's really what it boils down to. And it's unfortunate. At the end of the day, he's just a guy fighting to keep his girl. Shia is the commander of the Gloamer and a little older than the other girls. I kind of feel like she had potential to be an even better character towards the middle of the show. Pretty much at the middle of the show, you learn these things about Shia's past, and it makes you realize, oh my god, she might be kind of second runner-up to Olsen. You know, what a legend, what a legend. And somehow, it's like the writers, or I don't know what happened, they revert her back to how she's initially introduced, which initially when they introduced this character, they kind of tell you like, okay, this is the commander, she's slightly aloof, kind of goofy and uh, she has this sultry voice and it's like there's so much more to her than that and I feel like they kind of dropped the ball because they were setting it up really well in the middle of the show and then all of a sudden they just like oh we're gonna revert her back to this and because this is all she is and it's like what no way man no way you, you the way you were lining this up she's a very interesting character and like I said, runner up to having the most fortitude in the show. So, and then, I don't know. I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I, I feel like that was some potential that was just squandered. So Mom is the android that Mimsy buys for Kay when Kay wouldn't shut up one time when they were at some place visiting. And to be honest with you, he didn't even realize that she wasn't human. And I think that's an important aspect to this whole arc into this dynamic of their relationship. Cause I do believe from the moment he saw her, he always saw mom as this uh, young girl. He saw her as a child that he needed to protect and also as a friend as well. I really enjoyed the relationship that Mom and Kay have with each other. Um, of course, there is a point where Mom is developing feelings like romantic feelings and Kay 
is pretty straightforward in that he's like, yeah, I mean, to her, I see her as a child. That's it. End of discussion. But it is, like I said, it is fascinating because he really doesn't see her as a robot. Almost like ever. So before I started working on this video, I was looking around on YouTube to see if I found many Argus videos. There weren't many. Um, but I did come across two. And one described uh, mom as a lolly and annoying. <laughs> uh, the second one I saw, he said that he considered like mom's story arc a tragedy. And I definitely can relate to that. Like uh, I definitely feel her story is kind of tragic and kind of sad. But I would also add to that that I found that to be one of the most endearing parts of the show as well. I've always found the dynamics between man and machine to be fascinating. So there's definitely quite a bit of that in this show where we're seeing people and robots have relationships with each other as well as I guess you could say aliens. I also believe that she has one of the funniest moments with Kay in the entire show. So let me set this up. She's daydreaming about Kay. Uh, she's fantasizing about marrying him and being his wife and she's making coffee for him and she spills coffee in between his legs and it is so freaking hilarious and i understand that this is kind of like a a typical gag it's not like original by any means but what she's saying to me is freaking hilarious like you know because she's like oh wait let me help you let me help you I'm, an, I'm a nurse robot, I know how to do this, just let me help you. It's just funny what she's saying, and then also to see Kay completely out of character. Like, he defaults to the standard anime male protagonist, like, in, in Shonen anyways, you know. He totally defaults to that, and now he's freaking out because she's trying to take his clothes off, and he's just like trying to get away from her. And it's freaking funny. I, I really thought, I thought that was one of the funniest scenes in the show. Jobby is the dragon-like creature, but not really a dragon. If you grew up in the 80s, you saw this creature design in many Western and Eastern fantasies. He's actually a very easygoing character that always has to deal with Iman and human-like creatures freaking out over him. But really, he's not very dangerous. If I were to be completely honest, they have Jobby on the cover, but I wouldn't consider him one of the main characters. In fact, I would say he should have more screen time. The twins, Mai and Leia, are cute and adorable. By the way, I probably just totally destroyed their names. I apologize about that. But, uh, and since I always got to mix up, I'm just going to say the blue-haired one definitely has moments of getting annoyed with Kay because he's just obsessing over Mimsy. And sometimes she's just mean to mom for no damn reason. Unacceptable. We won't tolerate it here. Not here. No way. But anyways, for some reason, these two are the only other fighter pilots excluding K. So Captain is one of the other characters that I really enjoyed. And he is totally comic relief. Uh, mom found parts of him. He's a robot and she rebuilt him. And... He's like so super serious and so intense. He's like an old school combat veteran and he's just barking commands and stuff. I find him absolutely hilarious. But not only that, there's a couple of very non-jokey segments that he's a part of, you know, very powerful segments. And he just comes in, does his thing and he's out. And... I really appreciate this character and I found him very hilarious. And I'm gonna say something, I know I don't have to do this, I don't have to say this, but I'm gonna go there, I'm gonna be that guy. But you know, I liked him way more than I liked Jobby. I'm sorry, I had to say it, sorry. Athena is a Cherim pilot. She's a lieutenant that works under Olsen. Her story definitely hits you in the feels. Her part in the quote-unquote love triangle is really wild, and I must say, awkward. But she is also a great character you can't help but care about. And we will talk a little bit more deeply about her in a second. And there are a few others I could mention, but I would say those are the most interesting ones. Oh 
So I do want to provide this caveat to this video, and I just want to say that if you are interested in videos, specifically anime reviews, that spoil stuff and just talk about everything, talk about the themes, the concepts, the politics of the show, I'm your guy. And guess what? That's what we're doing with Argus. I am going to make a second video on Argus. And we're going to spoil everything. We're going to talk about the ending. We're going to talk about all the controversial stuff. It's going to be a lot of fun. I hope you check it out. Please check it out. Because you know what? Not many people are talking about this anime. So that's what your boy is here for. I'm just saying check it out. If you are familiar with space opera anime, you kind of know what you're signing up when you're watching a show like this. It's going to have war. It's going to have tragedy. Characters are going to die. And then there's going to be a guy or a gal that's like, I don't know. Who should I date? I don't know. I don't know. I picked this one. And then people are upset and get emotional over it. I never personally felt like this phrase had a negative connotation. I think the genre in the 70s and 80s was a hit because it blended so many different elements together and had at least a couple of things that would grab the average viewer's attention. I think in the case of Argus, it manages to be a very competent mecha anime. The series also does a good job of incorporating its intergalactic politics from all different races in this galaxy. And there is even conflict within the individual races where not everyone is uniform on how to deal with singularities or the space elevator. So let's take a brief moment to discuss why this anime was probably not incorporated into Robotech. There are some intriguing yet strange things that happen with female Amon before they turn 18. Now it's kind of debatable if this is like a big spoiler. I don't feel like this is a driving force into one of the main story's plot points, but for some people, maybe they would consider that. So what I'm gonna do is I will post the time where you can skip to if you don't want any spoilers whatsoever. It's kind of a deal, but it's like, I don't think anyone's really aiming to analyze this part of the story. So Iman females have to find a worthy partner to have children before they turn 18. If they don't, they could lose the opportunity to have kids. There seems to be something that happens to their bodies that prevents them from having kids after 18. Now, once this change has happened, male Iman will no longer find these female Iman as women. That means they won't find them attractive and they will not try to mate with them. And let's just be honest, this is a pretty wild concept and this would definitely not fly in 2023. So with all that being said, I do really appreciate that this anime does show us a female Iman that I guess you could say goes against the grain, goes against the societal norms and is still well respected, still well liked within her people. So going back to that whole robot and humans living together dynamic, there is an episode late in the series that shows Mom and the captain starting to feel a disconnect from the rest of the crew. It mainly stems from the Moo robots actively and continuously coming after the Glomer. It just seems as if Moo robots in general are on a mission to kill any human they come across. Let's be honest. The only way these guys are not going to shoot you is if you are a robot. Preferably not one that looks like a human, so yeah, no androids. Anyways, this episode I really enjoyed. It was fascinating to see there could be conflicts between different types of robots and different perspectives on robots and humans living together. So Athena's story is very tragic in my opinion and one that I will go in more depth in a spoiled video. For this video, we will say she is a character that has been through a lot. Even though there is so much pain from her past, she chose to make something of herself and become a very competent pilot for the Cherim. But there is really only one person she cares about. And even this one person, she isn't able to love him quite the way she would like. So the love and admiration is present, but it can only go so far. And rightfully so. So I have to say, in regards to the ending, the ending is slightly rushed. Now, I know you've heard throughout this review that I've brought up Ideon. 
Now, um, the reason why I'm doing that is because clearly, if you have clicked on this video, there is a high probability that you have watched one of my Idion videos. And I appreciate that. So I will give this small little caveat. This series, like the way the story flows, the way, you know, the story beats happen and everything, just the overall flow of it, it's put together better than Idion. Now, if you ask me on a personal level, which one do I like more? That's an easy question for me to answer. I would definitely say Idion. But I think when you look at each show, and especially after me watching Argus, like I can definitely see like Argus just flowed really well. It like there were never any parts where it felt like it was dragging. In my opinion, that's my opinion. I never felt like uh, there's repetition in the writing like some of my criticisms were of uh, Space Runaway Idion. But uh, that doesn't necessarily mean, of course, that it's perfect. I don't think it's per a perfect show. With Idion, the reason why I like that more is because there is a coldness to it. There is an unsettling nature. It's very unnerving when you feel like uh, death could happen at any point. And then when it does happen, and then almost everybody dies, you know, you might as well say everybody dies. But anyways, you know, when you when you see that and it's so unmerciful it is kind of fascinating so in the case of this show there's definitely deaths that happen in it but it's not as chaotic and unruly and unpredictable as idion and there's definitely not as many deaths but i will say this the deaths that do happen they're very impactful in some cases even uh, frustrating uh, you know the deaths that did happen not happy about I'm not happy about but I mean it, it makes sense in the realm and what had been designed for the show but I'm just saying I was not happy I was not happy but also me not being happy because there's something wrong with me me not being happy means good show so I personally felt like the ending was rushed how everything happened and the framing and the structure of the show Actually, the ending made sense. Like, um, again, comparing it to Idion, I feel like with Idion, the ending was 100% rushed. And I feel like with this show, it was rushed, but it made sense in the framing of the story. It made sense in what was happening within the story. So I'm not really, I can't really be mad about that. It, I just feel like, they could have gave themselves an episode or two longer to explore and explain, okay, this is what's happening. And there are aspects of the ending where I feel like, okay, they're kind of dancing in hypotheticals of this could have happened, or maybe this could have happened. Dude, just pick one, pick one. Piss people off, pick one. Don't, let's not dance in hypotheticals and and it could be this, it could be that, it could be this, it could be that. Just say, this is what happened. But uh, I do feel like even with me saying that, that's one observation. But I do, this is another reason why I want to make a spoiled video where I just spoil everything about the series because I do have a pretty solid theory of what that ending meant. And like I said, in my opinion, I feel like the ending, this ending makes more sense for this show, for Argus, than um, the ending we got for Idion. In conclusion, I totally recommend this if you enjoy this type of anime. If you enjoy this genre, I totally recommend this. If you love space opera anime, I totally recommend it. If you love mecha anime, I totally recommend it. If you love anime that was made in the 80s, I totally recommend it. And as I said before, um, I'm really happy with my purchase because I actually did buy this and the colors really pop. The sound is absolutely crisp. And uh, it, it, like I said, it brings back memories because uh, Robotech was one of the first animes I ever saw, you know, and so Macross for me was the starting point. And I know for a lot of people, they started with Dragon Ball or they started with Dragon Ball Z, or they started with Sailor Moon. But this this was my vibe. So as soon as I heard that there was this 
series that never came to the West. And it was part of Big West. (laughs) I knew I I had to jump on this. And so I was really happy to make this. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it for me. Please leave your thoughts down in the comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know what you think. I really appreciate all the love and praise for the old school anime, the Fatal Frame stuff, the horror stuff. I really appreciate it because I am literally talking about the things that I find entertaining. So this is easy for me. This is light work. So I appreciate your support. Like I said, if there's something you want me to cover more, be vocal about it. You know, I'm probably willing. I'm probably already thinking of another video and I'm like, I don't know if they want to watch this. I don't know. But yeah, so just let me know. I've already gotten a couple of recommendations uh, from one of the Ideon videos. So don't think those recommendations you gave me went unnoticed because I did notice them. And uh, actually, I was initially planning to make a review on one of those recommendations. But instead, just Argus came out of nowhere and blindsided me. But... I will let you know what that anime is in the future because I am definitely going to talk about it. So that leaves room for other old school anime that you want me to talk about. Please let me know. Please let me know. But all right. I've rambled on enough. I'll see you in the next video. I will see you in part two.